Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of To Be A Master. I'm Wokey, of course everyone knows me, I'm the number one Pokemon Masters player. Number two followed up by uh, the actual Ken Sugimori, the actual creator of Pokemon. Uh, and I'm here to, to bring you more the things you crave, the things you love, Pokemon Masters. Uh, and also today I've got with me a brand new player to the game. Someone who just wants to start out, loves Pokemon. In theory, he loves Pokemon. Uh, we got, of course, Zen. Say hello, Zen. Hey, everybody. I think I got the wrong one. This is Digimon Adventures. I don't think this is it. Well, it's Hang okay. On. I gotta go get the other one. Yeah. I gotta re-download it while you do the intro. Hang well, on. Yeah, let me, let me tell you, buddy. As always, you know what? This is a good thing. For anyone who don't know, there is a difference between Pokemon and Digimon. So let me just start off with it. Uh, the difference is is that there's way more fan art that is inappropriate for Pokemon out there. You can safely look up a Digimon name. You cannot safely look up a Pokemon name. And that is the big difference between them. I got it. I got it. All right. It's installing. We're ready to go. Okay. Perfect. So for today's episode, we're going to, of course, help Zen out. As, of course, they they released a brand new Pokemon uh, and also trainer because that's how Pokemon Masters work is that they realize, like, hey... Pokemon ain't enough to sell this shit no more. We have over 5,000 of them. You know what we don't have? Trainers. Not enough trainers for them. So, the new Pokemon Fair is, of course, what everyone's been waiting for since day one. They're, they're bringing out everyone's favorite, ya boy, Guzma, and then ya boy's lady friend, not Guzma. I believe yeah, that is her. That's, I think her actual name in the game. Yes, I believe that is what they're. Guzma, and then Team Skull's number one lieutenant, not Guzma. Yes, and they're, everyone loves them because, of yeah. course, not Guzma is the waifu version of it, while Guzma is like the cool masculine version. You know, the one that you're like, oh, shit, son. It's like, it's like Byleth and Girl Byleth. Exactly. From, Except for. Un... Regalia Lost Heroes. Yeah. Except for in uh, that game, you couldn't have male Byleth with female Byleth. In this one, you totally can't have both of them together. And it creates yeah, crazy. Yeah. It, it, it's a, yeah, it's like a, what do you call it? Like a, uh, a time loop. Yeah. They're from different timelines, so it's fine. Yeah. And everyone knows Pokemon's about time. If you ever look up the Pokemon timeline, you'll know for a fact that Pokemon is about timelines. Because uh, as I was recently playing for Pokemon Silver, Bill fucking makes a time machine so you can trade back between Pokemon Red and Blue and Pokemon Silver. I never thought he got enough uh, credit for that. No, I felt it was weirdly passed on the fact that Bill created a fucking time machine to trade Pokemon. Also, it feels like that's a very limited scope uh, purpose of a time machine. Yes, it is. But also feel like it's okay because Bill's a nerd. I think this is well established in the Pokemon lore. He's, he's in his furry suit when you first meet him, so you already kind of know like, oh... I yeah, didn't know. The zipper broke, so you need to help him get out. Yeah, and it's like, I don't know why, dude. Listen, I know it's hard out there, but you don't need to dress up as a Nido King to get to find your queen. You know what I'm saying, son? That's what Guzma told. <laughs> that's what Guzma told Bill because he was just like so fucking alpha. But he also he was respectful towards what Bill said because he's like, listen, I have nothing wrong with you going after a lady that also likes to dress up as a Nido Queen, but I draw the line at actual Nido Queens. <laughs> Yeah, Guzma has standards. He he's understanding, but he also is, is stern. Yes, and that's why that's why he's the leader of Team Skull. Now, Zen, before we start, how much do you know about Team Skull? Uh, I think they're the ones that Giovanni is the guy, right? Uh, you're getting close. You're getting close. That is uh, that's Team Rocket. Giovanni's oh, okay. the the he's, he Giovanni is a mob boss that gets taken down by a ten year old. Um. It's very. It's actually very it's sad. A good effective mafia. A very ineffective mafia. He got his ass kicked so hard he contemplated suicide in the next game and decided not to because a magical time traveling Pokemon showed up in him and he's like, I guess life is worth living. Well, if I lost my entire criminal organization to a ten year old, I probably would at least yeah. think about it. Especially because he can't find him anymore because that ten year old went up a fucking mountain and now just like lives in the <laughs> lives in a mountain. <laughs> Yeah, Red has a an interesting life. Yeah, never been a hundred percent sure what's wrong with Red, but 
but thankfully Pokemon Masters does give you a little bit more insight because Red was a former uh, unit. We're not talking about Red today, though. We're talking about Guzma. So let me just quickly tell you what Team Skull is about. Team Skull is made of, is an entire team made up of the high school guys who were gang gang leader gang members, but didn't actually kill anyone. It's a very important, distinct difference. <laughs> is that uh, growing They're up in like high the they're all they're all bluster but no no bite is that it yes it's basically uh as someone who grew up in california who grew um they were the high school kids who were always confused me because they were asian but also talked extremely gangster and i was extremely confused about where they were coming from (laughs) it was the first time i had ever been hit with culture clash because you see uh america is a melting pot so that's kind of what team skull represents it's basically a team of fuck-ups and Guzma decides that I'm going to look after these fuck-ups because the uh, school system has failed them <laughs> horribly. And, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's rough. So, of course, everyone knows Pokemon Sun and Moon takes place in Los Angeles, which is where Team Skull is mostly located in. It's in the city of L.A. Um, that's why there's so many, uh, you know, multinational people in uh, uh Pokemon Sun and Moon. That's also why people don't like it a whole bunch. I don't know if you know this, and there's actually a big controversy over Sun and Moon because they decided to focus it on such a weird locale. Yeah, well, I had a feeling that uh, when the final, like, guy, you know, what do you, what do you call it? The guy that you fight at the end of the game. Uh, the final boss? Of Sun and Moon, specifically? Well, yeah, but in Pokemon, he's like the... He had, like, a mask on... Oh, Mer- Mer- him in Sun and Moon. I don't know. Yes, yes, Mer- 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 uh, Mer- Garcetti from uh, yeah. Los Angeles. He shows up in a in a lucha mask. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was weird when he took his mask off, and it was actually Bernie Sanders. And I feel like people didn't like the socialism aspect of of Sun and Moon. No, yeah, I can definitely see it. Like there was a whole bunch of like. Uh, Donald Trump went on his Twitter, as he does, talking a bunch of shit about Sun and Moon, which lets you know the kind of people who don't like Sun and Moon. Everyone one does, yeah. It's kind of unfortunate yeah. that <laughs> it's falling down this such a way, but hey, people can't just enjoy their stuff, I guess, anymore. It's a damn shame. But yeah, Team Skull is run by Guzma, and yeah, everyone loves... Make some games without politicizing it, that's a shame. Yeah, it's a it's a goddamn shame. But it's okay because you want to talk about someone who's not political. It's Guzma. He's got the style of what looks like the 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 he looks like the son of the guy who sings Monster Mash. He's got so much style coming out of him that it's unbelievable. Big ass chain because that's how you do it in the in the hood. I don't know if you know this Zen. I know you're not from the hood. Actually, let me double check on this. Zen, are you from the hood? Uh no. Have you ever Probably seen not. Have you ever seen Leprechaun back to the hood? I have seen Leprechaun in the hood, yeah. Okay, but you haven't seen the sequel Leprechaun Back to the Hood. Which no, is an no, actual which is a, which is a real movie by the way. I've also not seen an actual Leprechaun in the hood in my lifetime. Oh, okay. You have seen Meliodas though, who is basically a leprechaun in Oh, yeah, but Meliodas doesn't live in it. He lives in a very privileged neighborhood so yeah he lives in um the panties of a 16 year old uh so back to our boy guzma who of course is <laughs> guzma by the way very privileged neighborhood very privileged neighborhood very few live there guzma like a true man <laughs> he lives in the panties of an above uh of a woman of his age same age so it's perfectly very legal important uh Guzma always stresses the importance of consent. Yes, it's actually crazy. He's really trying to bring in, give an education to these kids at Team Skull that they never got in LA. So they're getting, he's teaching them things such as consent, which is his number one thing he always has in a big old blackboard because he knows how important it is to teach kids. He says in a big, big, big fat letters, don't rape. And it's like, wow, such a crazy statement. And it's crazy really that. Bold, uh, bold leader. A bold leader, and he also says, but I forgot. Actually, above it, it says, "Remember, your boy says," and then below it, it says, <laughs> "Don't rape." And oh, it's an well, important lesson. All of his classes are given in the same format as Sonic says from the old Sonic cartoon. Yeah, so of course he says, "Of course he says your boy says instead." Yeah, he he you know he hits the basics like your boy says uh, trans rights. He's like very much like respect those motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? 
<laughs> Your boy says, give bitches respect. He believes that all bitches deserve respect. It's so hard, and it's like, so many male youths are taught these important lesson lessons, but your boy Gusbo has their back. Yeah, he's really, a, he's really a hero for the modern youth. Yeah. Probably. Yeah, he says, your boy says, wrap it up, you don't want to catch corona, so you can take that whatever way it means. He's all about the safety is what I'm saying. And that's why I feel like it's very important. I really like that Pokemon Masters has made it. So one, his unit, which we have not mentioned this Pokemon, which it should be mentioned, is a giant bug-ass water monster uh, who is supposed to be strong, I think. But he just kind of looks like a weird Transformer monster. Yeah, he looks like uh, he looks like an Animal Crossing fossil that just moves. Yeah, it's a very strange Pokemon, but it just shows the power and respect that Guzma kind of dictates for himself that he's able to get this person, like, under his control and stuff. Um, and as such, every right, single... Right, which, is why, which is why Blathers is the other uh, Team Skull lieutenant. Yes, it's, of course, not Guzma, and it's Blathers. And Blathers is always, like, talking shit on the insects, but he's also like, I gotta respect these guys, because it's my job to respect respect them. Right, because he takes Guzma's teachings to heart really well. Yeah. It's probably the biggest success story out of yeah. Team Skull, which is why he got promoted. Yeah, all the way to the top. And, of course, Guzma also made sure that the other lieutenant was female because he's like, uh, bitches don't get enough respect at work. I'm not going to be that way. I'm not Guzma. <laughs> you deserve to be the top of the charts here. And everyone right, should follow right. suit. It's equal pay. Oh, equal pay. Yes, equal pay. It's like I had this has to be this has to happen. I can't believe that other people aren't doing this. That's also why it's later revealed. I don't know if you know this. This is some backstory, some spoilers that Guzma's actually the son of Bernie Sanders. That's why they have the same hair. Didn't know that, but that explains why Joe Biden doesn't like him very much. No, that's also why Joe Biden's one of the um, the elite four of uh, the original game, and why it's it's one of the hints that they give that this region exists. And he says, "God damn it, I hate that team skull. I hate." M oh, he also says, "I hate minorities." By the way, but it's okay. <laughs> He's like, "It's okay. I said that twenty years ago. It doesn't count anymore." <laughs> we cool. Uh, yeah, just because I said it in the past, it doesn't mean anything now. Exactly. No, words have no meaning, and people that's grow. Wrote the, that's why he wrote the crime bill, was to target Team Skull. But Guzma got him off the streets, and now everything is better. Yeah, and of course Joe Biden is taking credit for all the work that uh, <laughs> that Guzma yeah, is doing. As, as he does. Yeah, it's, it's a damn shame. And that's also one of the reasons why people love the Pokemon characters so much, is that they're fluid, they're dynamic, and they're constantly growing. Especially in, it's crazy to think that all this lore started in Gen One, and then here we are in Gen Thirty Three, and it's like, wow, it's like a, it's like Shenmue. It's never a never not stopping uh, series of adventures. Yeah, it's it is pretty crazy that Pokemon has lasted for one hundred and sixty seven years. Yeah, we never thought we'd make it, but I'm glad it has. I'm really glad it has. Uh, as for what the unit does, I should mention that Guzma, of course, does the thing that all Guzmas does is that every single one of his moves is actually a support move that helps the other members of your team. So he has like, you know, your boy says pep and it automatically increases. It makes everyone attack right then and right then and there, which is crazy because even if you didn't select an attack of the other two people, they just automatically attack because they're like, oh, my God, I've been so inspired by Guzma that I don't know what to do. Uh, and then, of course, there's the other move, your boy step. At that point, it just like a little dance break happens, which I'm glad that they've added a meta character that just creates dancing because there's not enough like uh, dancing in metas anymore. It just doesn't happen, except for, of course, Seven Deadly Sins uh, Grand Cross, which has uh, all the dancing you would ever want in any game you, would, in theory, would buy. Yeah. Except for, of course, yes, Pokemon. It Monster. does have uh, dancing Meliodas. Yeah, which is the the dance he did after a, he was a, a cool... New, in a new banner with a 0.25% uh, pull rate. Yeah, and of course everyone remembers that iconic dance Meliodas did. He did that after getting off of his crime. Uh, he was not sent to jail. Got, after he got acquitted for yeah. uh, molesting his young companion. Yeah. He did that. It's crazy. And then he said, I, it sucks that you acquitted me because I definitely did it. And then he left. Yeah, and then he wrote that book too. Yeah, I banged her. <laughs> so what? <laughs> well, he had, he had a... Um... A black leather glove and it didn't fit his hand no but little did so it know I guess it wasn't him 
Yeah. Little did he know, which he revealed in the book, is that that, that glove was actually for his penis. He has like a five prong penis <laughs> that's really weird and misshapen. Even, yeah. Yeah. It's they, cr- they didn't realize. No, no. Uh, your boy Gusmo also would not approve of such vulgarity in the writing. <laughs> he says it's better to no, say vulgarities no, out yeah, with your, your mouth. Boy, your boy Guzma does not uh, approve of Meliodas. No, he doesn't. They have long-standing beef. It's actually believed that uh, outside the Hollywood Strip, when someone opened fire on Guzma, they believed that it was from the camp of Meliodas. <laughs> someone from Meliodas' camp. They, yep. they believe it looked a lot like Bond leaving the scene. <laughs> it looked a lot like Bond. There was like weird like little uh, music notes in the air while he was driving off, which is why people yeah, thought... Well, just floating, and they were like, I, that seems like it's him. Yeah. He seems to join the... It's the... either him or Hisoka from Hunter Hunter. One of those two. And both of them enjoy Tiny Child, which is unfortunate. That's the, na- the gang name for, <laughs> for Meliodas. It's the kind of people he attracts. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that is weird that he has a, a, a seven-man crew, and they're all creepy and weird. Yes, all of every single one of them. Not one a single one of them not a creeper in some way. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate. Obviously, the antithesis of uh, Guzma's teachings in Team Skull. Yeah, exactly. Not 100% what anyone stands. It's actually funny that you mention it, because now we have to mention Lady Guzma, whose Pokemon is Salazzle, who is, I believe... What has been described as some kind of furry wet nap uh, because of just how crazy she is, including down to her lore, that uh, only the females of her species evolves. So that means that this Salazzle has open sex with the little boy once or something. It's one of the most distressing things about Pokemon out there. Uh, yeah, it... that, that's a dark backstory. Yes, it is. But as funny enough... The Salazzle used to be uh, in Meliodas' gang, but the, it's since reformed. Oh, yeah. She's learned her ways. After teaming up with Not Guzma, uh, she's really seen the light, the errors of her ways. She's doing community service, trying to get back. She's, of course, abiding to the laws of which of her parole, which is to stay 50 feet away from any other country featuring tiny boy Salazzles, which I can't remember the name of right now, so we're going to call him Boy Azzles. Uh, she has to stay away from those. Yeah, yeah, well, she had to team up with uh, Lady Guzma to fight Dracula in Castlevania Three, so they have since uh, bonded very well. She's come around. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's another important thing about Team Skull is that they're not just about ones who have not committed crimes. They're about the people who also have committed crimes and are just trying to live their life into a new way. Because he believes that, you know what, society isn't going to be able to give you a new shot because society fucking sucks, blows ass, as he's so pointedly has said before. So we're going to actually get you a way to live your life and stay, stay on the straight and narrow, which is, again, one of the reasons why people love Team Skull so much. It's actually but, kind but of. But he says he says that uh, life blows butt because he doesn't curse. Oh yeah, life blows butt. Uh, he says bitch is not a curse because that's just a way of like addressing someone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which and is... that's just a formal way to talk to somebody. Yeah, not, he says not swearing. It's yeah. also bitch also applies to both man and woman. He says, and also in between, he also wants to stress that enough that a bitch can be anything yeah, they it, wish. It it belongs to everyone of whatever gender you choose to identify yeah. as. As his his trademark book says, a bitch can be whatever they want to be. <laughs> by Guzma, my book. Yeah, by Guzma. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was a big. That was a big seller. Yeah, huge seller. So yeah, the that's kind of their units. I'm I'm kind of run down from them. It's not really important what they do in Pokemon Masters because in Pokemon Masters, uh, a lot of people just kind of play auto and you can win that way, which is very good because all gotcha should be able to do that. If you can't do that, then what the hell's even the point? It's why Dragalia Lost in Pokemon Masters is two of the top games out there. And then unfortunately, it's also why Seven Deadly Sins, which you have to uh, farm 75 hours in order to get one character ready for PvP. Um, that's all what the top gotchas do nowadays. If you don't do it, then you're just wasting everyone's time. <laughs> It turns out that watching animations is, is just as good as playing games these days. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. Especially when they're uh, great animations featuring the biggest uh, titty bounce you've ever seen in your life. Except for in Pokemon right. Masters, because that game is rated uh, G, I believe. G for Gotcha. Yeah, well, well, because you know Guzma would. It's rated G for Guzma. Oh. Uh, he would not approve of of objectifying not Guzma like that. Exactly. It's also why Pokemon Masters releases like 17 different multis any given day. Because <laughs> he's like, yeah. damn it, these gotchas need to have more currency. And he's like, now that I'm in the game, shit's going to change around here. And he was right. And shit changed. 
and he, he really pulled it all together. Yeah. So what uh, uh, now? This is the part of the show, uh, Zen, where we put uh, people on some kind of uh, the Guzma scale out of how Guzma they can be. A one out of five Guzma is, of course, not very much Guzma, but a five out of five Guzma is like that's a that's a Guzma. That's a top tier Guzma, as far as I'm concerned. Um, how are you feeling? Ab- yeah. How are you feeling about not Guzma on the Guzma scale? not guzma is probably like a four out of five guzmas Mm. because she really she really appreciates guzma but she's not quite there yet no she definitely has uh her teachings inside of him and in a consensual way not in a weird way like meliotis not in a meliotis way no way um i i I would agree four out of five perfectly good uh now how you feeling about your boy guzma on the Guzma scale. Uh, Guzma is I- infinite out of five Guzmas on the Guzma scale. I don't think you can possibly top him on the Guzma scale. Yeah, this is kind of the the end-all be-all for Pokemon Masters. For uh, I don't understand where they can go from Guzma, because Guzma was the character everyone was waiting for. If, if only I can only imagine they will start releasing Guzma with like different Pokemon. So like Guzma with a Meryl. Guzma with a <laughs> Guzma with a teacup, the the teacup Pokemon that was just recently released. He'll, yeah, like, it's just like once a month you just get a different Guzma with a new Pokemon. Yeah, but uh, Guzma with uh, Gold Speed, which I believe is his name, the insect's name. That's his number one Pokemon. That's his bro from the beginning. So this is kind of like the, as you said, the infinite Guzma. You won't get more Guzma than this. Right. Um, right exactly. Yeah. So I've, and yeah. then Blathers is a is a five out of. Yeah, five out of five, Guzma. It's funny that you say that uh, <laughs> both not Guzma and uh, Blathers are on the same level, but <laughs> Guzma, the way Blathers is one point higher, but they just shows Blathers is slightly more Guzma than not Guzma is. Yeah, I think it's the not in not Guzma's name that really stops yeah, her. Yeah, that's that's really where the point falls. Because if she was Guzma, she would be Guzma, but she's not. Yeah. So she's not Guzma. It's not quite as good. Yeah, yeah. You have to dock some points from that for sure. Yeah, it's tough. Um, it's tough. It's tough. And yeah, I agree with that. Blather's five out of five Guzma. And that's it for units. Now, Zen, do you have any questions to give me so that I can hey, answer? Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, – I want to bring up a few questions that I think beginners probably need to know. Oh. Uh, so the first one – uh, just, you know, I'm going to put a few names on them just so you can kind of imagine the type of player uh, that might ask these kind of questions. So the first one is from Luca, the sin of literally nothing. Mm. So so picture that in your brain. Gotcha. And the question is, why? Man, I feel like he's already answered it because he's the sin of nothing. That means that uh, that's zero. That's the answer. The reason for why is uh, you have nothing. You're a sin of nothing. Not even the seven dev- deadly sins say that they're a sin of nothing. That just shows. That's like um, <laughs> that makes you like the the cuck of the seven deadly sins. If you're the sin of nothing, you're just watching the other seven deadly sins do something. They they get to do stuff and you don't. That's yeah. That's tough. Very unfortunate. <laughs> that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So next for the next one, envision uh someone like named like Meg or something like that. Mm-hmm. At like Ego Patel, like that, like an Ego Patel kind of guy. I got you. And so this question would be: Why do all the Mewtwo players in co-op uh, not turn off auto like idiots? Uh, it's because they are, because again, they're based off Giovanni, and that guy lost to a ten-year-old. Of course, they're not going to have any fucking sense in their brain <laughs> if they're using them. <laughs> ah, perfectly answered. Uh, that's that's excellent. Uh, all right, so here's one from uh, Ignan. Let's let's you know the Grand Cross guy. Let's uh, let's put him in your brain for this one. All right, I got you. He says, "Is it worth me trying this out when I already have to play Grand Cross? In other words, can I still get a Charizard?" Uh, well, that's one thing that Grand Cross definitely does not have. It's Charizard, um, and they will never have Charizard because again, Charizard is not a Charizard is for consensuality in every sense yeah, of the word. Charizard is not a child predator, so he cannot be in Seven Deadly Sins. No, he can't. He's like I, I can't. You know, I, I hung out with Ash a whole bunch, and let me tell you, he's taught me a new way. Not as much as his Guzma has taught me, but he's taught me to understand people. So well, Ash introduced Charizard to Guzma. So, ah, uh, yes, of course. Uh, thank you for giving me that lore backstory right there. Um, I knew that. Yeah. 
I think the the only thing that's a problem is that Grand Cross never has to be on constantly playing even when you're sleeping. So I don't know if your phone has time to actually occupy more than one game if your main game is Grand Cross. Um, if, if anything, I'd say buy another game using your YouTube money and uh, put that on Pokemon Masters and then just leave uh leave grand cross kind of grinding in the background as it should kind of always be in in a constant state and then play some pokemon masters i know that makes sense yeah, yeah. i think so you got another Definitely one makes sense. yeah yeah we got, I got i got a lot of more a lot more thoughts swirling around up here hmm. so uh how about one from a guy you know like maybe he just made a new twitter it's like kind of new so it's like at samuel maybe it has like a billion numbers behind it Oh okay, and it and he he asks, "What do you like more, Pokemon Masters or Grand Cross, and why?" I mean the the easy answer is of course is uh, Pokemon Masters because again, I not to underestimate the amount of just pure boob flash and abs and seven deadly sins, as is as is the name implies, it is an actual sin to play it uh, because of how evil it is, how much evil energy it right, radiates right, right. from because the phone. Of all the because of all the, the children yeah yeah uh but in general i would say you know pokemon masters is the way to go the only thing that pokemon masters actually funny enough up until this recent update when they added uh guzma the only thing it was missing was drip and now it has all the drip in the world and it's true guzma outdrips anybody in that game it's true which is actually why uh, they've been trying to work. The, the, act, the data miner was going to tell us that they were actually working on a Guzma suit for every single character, but then the data miner was sued for $1 million and is no longer allowed to reveal any information. I think he's in debtor's prison now. Yeah. So he can't, yeah, we can't see what the Guzma suits look like, but they are coming. Yeah, they are coming for Grand Cross. But until that day happens, Pokemon Masters all day. That makes sense. All right, so for this one, uh, let's anime blaster like someone like that mm. and he says what's a pokemon philosophically uh, philosophically as i said in the beginning of the show because we get this question a lot is that a pokemon is anything that the second you search up the name for it just a buttload of inappropriate pictures show up it's really the difference between any character the only other per the only other uh series that has this much uh horny energy behind it is of course the fate series <laughs> but somehow pokemon out hornies it in certain aspects <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy in that way um but yeah, yeah the, pokemon uh definitely definitely has a type yeah it has a type and again no problem with that person's type if they're having fun consensually as lord guzma tells us you uh always follow guzma on that yeah, yeah. so maybe for this one um uh, maybe like a guy who would call himself mr mayo or something like that mm. you know uh he says Masters is great at listening to their fans. So what issue with the game do you have that you wish they would fix? Mm. I really feel that um, it's weird because unfortunately, uh, because this is something that's uh, the problem with the Pokemon world in general, um, which is a real shame because they implemented it really recently. And I understand they did this because they want to keep it lore accurate. But um, Joe Biden doesn't believe in um, health care for all. So actually all Pokemon centers you have to pay for. Uh, so now if you want to heal any of your Pokemon at all, you have to actually uh, pay a currency. It's a, it's not a well, paid you currency. you don't even have to pay. You have to, you have to pay every day to your uh, Poke insurance company. Yeah, and it's like, what? That's crazy. And when you want to heal, but uh, like half the time they don't cover it. So you end up having to pay out of pocket anyway. Yeah, and then if you suddenly get too injured, then they like, oh, we got to charge you more now and also we're dropping you. Uh, so if anything, Pokemon Masters should go back to the way Pokemon was and the way it should be, as told by Bernie Sanders in the actual Pokemon game, is that uh, all healthcare should be free. Right. Yeah. Healthcare should not be for for profit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Shouldn't cost. Yeah. It shouldn't cost anything to live. Right. 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 All right. So the next one, let's say it's from just like Jenna, just like a name like that, like a regular mm -hmm. name. And this person would probably ask, uh, what trainer has the most drip and who should I prioritize grinding for? Guzma definitely has the most drip. Um, but unfortunately, you cannot grind his drip. You do have to pull the banner to get him to get that drip. And in terms of um, farming characters, I believe the answer is all of them because all of them are good. But if I were to pick a specific one, it's the one you care about most. That's the one you always got to prioritize. 
How do you feel about this one, Dan? It definitely blathers. Mm, yeah, blathers. Yeah, you have to grind him up by catching a, blow, a lot of insects in order to get his... Uh, <laughs> get his... He, he slowly overcomes his prejudices, and that's how you recruit him. Yes, that's the number one way to do it. It's a real feel-good story at the end when he finally, like, um, says, Damn it, I respect you, insect. <laughs> <laughs> it's all worth it. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. Uh, the next one from a guy who would probably go by something like Lord Yedith, we'll say. Mm -hmm. And he said, who are your top three favorite sync pairs? Not necessarily the top three best ones, but just the two, the, the three you like the most. Uh, for me personally, it has to be Guzma, not Guzma and Blathers. It's just like, it's such a, tr it's such an unfair thing. Cause they're such fan favorites and they're like the team, you know, they're team skull incarnate in essence. Um, but if I were to choose another one that's not from them, of course, Red, fantastic. Um, the main character, there's a character in there named Loki, and his Pokemon is Kid Fisto. I really love that pairing right there. If anything, I feel they should really balance out Kid Fisto because he has the power of the Force and Golem, which I feel is too strong at that point. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, that is a little overpowered, a little bit. Too strong. Way too strong. And if I would do another like one... handle it, but I mean, you know, not yeah. a lot of characters can. And then the last one, of course, is uh, Cam and Chase, who are the who are the trainers from Pokemon Yellow. Fantastic. Right. Right. Love them. Mm -hmm. And he also has, like, backups of, like, uh, Zenrot the Sand, uh, Sand Slash and Woki Free the Butterfree. He's just too powerful. Yeah, he's, like the, he's like the creative character where he's got extra other Pokemon he can use. Yeah. It's, it's powerful stuff, and I'm glad that they added him. It just shows that Pokemon Masters really listens to their uh, player base more than anyone. And they said, we yeah. want this one. And they gave it to him. I do think it's they fucked They really went out of their way to make it happen. Yeah. It is fucked up that they added Nuzlocke trainers, where if they die once, then you have to pull them again. <laughs> but hey. Yeah, yeah. If, if they die once, then yeah, they're, they're back in the banner, which sucks. But hey, those people want that kind of uh, experience, for sure. Yeah, that's, you know, the hard mode. Uh, the hard mode experience. Yeah. Uh, do yeah. we get, got another question for me? Yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, six more questions that I am just randomly thinking up right now based on nothing. All right, sweet. Uh, yeah, one who uh, I, w I would call this a hell edge question. And he says, who is the best free unit? Uh, man, I feel like it has to be Blathers. Blazers is free. It's a lot of grinding because let me tell you, sometimes you have to wait till like 8 p.m. to catch a specific insect, but it's 100% worth it. Yeah, some only spawn from like 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. and stuff. That, that's rough. Yeah. The music does change to a pretty rocking tune during those times, though. That's so. true, yeah. Night, night music in the Blathers event was really good. Yeah, fantastic. Well, do you have a favorite yourself, Sam? Favorite free unit? Um... I think probably Antonio the Anteater Villager that came with Blathers. Ooh, that one's a good one. Yeah. yeah, that is a good one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do like it. Nothing against Blathers, of course, but... No, no. You know, for... Antonio's got a lot of charm. Yeah, and of course, he's he's also Italian, which is really helpful in a multicultural yeah, he's, he's an Italian Anteater, so yeah. that's, you know... Makes a lot of JoJo's references as well, which I think is very funny. Yeah, yeah, they definitely wrote him uh, to be very aware of the factual historical events that took place in the Mafia. <laughs> yes, 100%. Constantly mentions a turtle, and he kind of winks at you to let you know. Yeah, that, like, you know, you know, and he knows, mm -hmm. but, like, the government won't tell you. <laughs> yeah, the government is holding it back. The government is hiding knowledge of uh, the Stand Arrow, but he knows, and you know. Yeah, and that's important. Yeah. yeah. Antonio, very good choice. So uh, this question, which I, I would say sounds like uh, like a Zach G-ish question sort of type thing. Mm -hmm. He says, what's the best way to farm gems? <sighs> I mean, the best way is that you bust out that wallet <laughs> is the best way. But also, if you just wait a day, it, some more will show up. Yeah, they, they just kind of show up every yeah. day, which is good. You gotta play the long game. If you're impatient or a YouTuber, you hit up that uh, credit card. You give it to them. Uh, but if you got, if you're ready to play, you just wait, man. They'll give it to you eventually. 
Yeah, it just slowly like trickles in. Yeah. And then you look at it and you're like, wow, I've got wow, all of this stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. The next one is from a guy who says that he he's the real Fox Sid of Greed, so I guess he's the actual Bond. Oh shit. Um, he listens. Yeah, who we've been talking shit about at the show. Yeah, but he likes the show. Bond is that kind of guy where he's like, "Yeah, Bane Bond, you tried to murder someone." He goes like, "Ha ha, yeah, I did." <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely that kind of guy. Uh-huh. Okay, let me give you this W, son, because you're just speaking, speaking nothing but wins. Uh, he says, "What is your method for grinding that keeps you from feeling burnt out in the game?" And also. Uh, what would your top three team compositions be as of right now? I mean, how to stop being burnt out is that you leave it on auto and then play another game <laughs> while it's doing that. <laughs> that seems to be the number one way. Uh, I know a guy named Chase who has his game auto and then he reads a manga while it autos in the background. <laughs> it completely kills his battery life, but hey, that's the best way of doing it. So... To not feel burnt out anyway. In terms of team comp, I feel like we got, of course, Team Skull. Uh, we got the the previous three that I mentioned. And then here's a new team, which is crazy. It's actually the combination of... Uh, it's the ground, a combination of Groundon, Kyogre, and uh, Rayquaza. No trainers. It's just them in a constant state of fighting each other. It's really fucked up that they release this team, but if you do it, they just kind of like blast each other, and then the enemy gets caught in the in the crossfire. It's, it's really nuts, and it's really insane. It's real yeah, good that though. Is, that is wild. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. How do you? How about you, Zen? How are you feeling? Uh, I'm a big fan of uh red, blue, and green because I you know got to play the original Pokemon trio. Yeah, RGB original rgb mm-hmm. that's probably mine yeah if i had to pick one hmm. that's a i also don't know a lot about a lot about team skull so you know it's fair maybe, enough maybe uh I would, I would come around to them the more i learn about their lore yeah yeah the, in general, the pokemon masters will easily let you in there now how do you stop from being burnt out on auto uh so what i do to stop from being burnt out on auto is i just go play uh another game like seven deadly sins or final fantasy and i get burnt out on that mm. and then i come back to pokemon excited to play it again because i'm now burnt out on this other thing smart it's like burning the candles at both ends you're just on fire by the end of it right right but eventually when both candle ends meet in the middle the fire's giant and so you're really getting a lot done yeah, and in during that, uh, there's also a brief moment where the fires are just so close to each other, but they're not just ready to actually catch on fire. Uh, and it's during that specific point of apathy is when you open up Teppin and you go like, "All right, what's going on? <laughs> what's going yeah, exactly. on?" Exactly. Right, right before the giant fire explodes. Yeah. Yeah, and then you get out the second the giant fire explodes because you're like, "All right, that's how much time that I need." Yep, that's all I needed. Exactly one game against zero. It's all the time I needed. Yes, and you're like, perfect, see you in a month. See you, see you next expansion. <laughs> see you next character. Yeah. Uh, the next one would be from someone named Elias TS, and he probably would say, do you think having a sync grid behind the paywall of 3 out of 5 is going to last forever, or do you think they're going to implement a way to add in dupes for free? Uh, so for this one specifically, I think they're going to always look back to specifically Dokkan and how the fact that that thing's been going on for five years and they never released something like that. So the chances of them actually releasing something is next to zero because Dokkan ruined it for everyone. They're actually all waiting for Dokkan to release it because then they go like, okay, it's cool. But Dokkan never did, so they just, <laughs> they're just never going to do it. Yeah, that makes sense. You basically just wait for Dokkan to set the rules and then you just do whatever you want. Yeah, exactly. The second Dokkan does anything where it's like, oh, you're improving, everyone improves to make Dokkan look worse. That's kind of the right. unspeaking code uh, that yeah. they all share. Except for uh, f- yeah. except for Fate, which is in some kind of weird perpetual time machine that doesn't apply to any rules. Yeah, no, that, uh, that definitely makes sense. Mm-hmm. I like that. Next up, this next one would probably be from a dude named ISOH. And he, he would probably want to know, uh, when eggs are introduced, do you think they'll add a universal way to increase the sync move level of the new Pokemon? Sort of like a, maybe like a voucher. 
Hmm. Or will they just put copies to buy in the shop? I think what what well, chances are will happen is that um, just like actual Pokemon egg farming, you are going to have to breed a new egg every single time, and you're going to have to walk a whole bunch to actually unlock them. Uh, and that's the only way that they're ever going to do it for them. I think it only makes sense because they have to keep it as lore yeah, accurate well, as possible. It's like, a, it's like a Pokemon Go crossover. Yes, exactly. Uh, yeah. So they will I be. I read about that. Yeah. yeah. So just make sure to put your phone on a treadmill. And it will, it will have all the steps you need for you, it. You tie it to the bike wheel and you spin the bike wheel. Yes. Or put it on top of a washing machine. Yeah. <laughs> all good, accurate ways to game the egg system. And then it will hatch and you'll have your Togepi and then you have to do that four more times. Yeah. And it. Yeah. And then eventually you'll have a maxed out uh, Togepi. Yes. Exactly. But you'll never get Togetic. And then I think, I think there's well no because you can't you can't evolve he doesn't evolve yeah it's very sad so i think there's one more question everybody would probably want to know out there you got from, it from the number one pokemon master and if you had to guess what the anniversary unit would be what what do you think it'll be hmm well let's see they've already done a mail which is red so now they're going to have to do a woman who is well-loved by everyone. And they've already kind of done Cynthia. <laughs> so if anything, Cynthia in a bikini, maybe, that would be my guess right now. Like, um, yeah, that's, that's a pretty good one. Yes. That or the other woman from Sun and Moon that only shows up in uh, some kind of hentai dojin, Lusamine. <laughs> they could do her as well. Yeah, they could do her. And they I can... guess it's probably uh, Guzma in a bikini. Oh, that would be very good. And then because he's all about equality, he would also make sure to have um, not Guzma there. But she's in a very, like, it's one of those swimsuits where, like, it's never drawn. But when you see it, you're like, that's very attractive because it actually leaves something to the imagination. Yeah, yeah it's very modest. Yeah. Yes. Still very stylish and still very much becoming of the woman that she represents as herself, of course, because she decides what her, uh, her image is and we have no control over that. She decides <laughs> she's the, she's the puppet master. We are the puppets, of course, uh, as you would do it. Um, yeah, as, as one does. Yeah. I think in general, bikini units would be pretty bitching for Pokemon masters. Uh, take a playbook off of seven deadly sins, grand cross. <laughs> Perfect. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Consensual fun. That's the name of the banner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, Meliodas is also on it, but if you pull him, uh, it uninstalls your data. Oh, yeah. Whatever. But uh, but don't worry. He's on a... <laughs> he's on a Legends Limited percent rated, yeah, and so it's fine. You're a 0.25% pull rate. <laughs> Uh, so don't worry about actually pulling him. Uh, <laughs> but let me tell you, if you could use him, he'd be extremely broken, but nobody has him, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Alright, that was the last question, right? Yeah, yeah, I can't think of any more that, that anyone would want to know. All right, then. So that that's the end of today's episode. It, it was pretty fruitful. It was actually very fun to have a new player on board uh, with Zen. Zen, I hope you learned a lot about Guzma, uh, Bernie Sanders, Pokemon Sun and Moon, all the basics. I hope you learned a, I hope you learned a lot about uh, consent as well. <laughs> I'm sure you already knew because you have uh, <laughs> uh, someone with you, but <laughs> just in case. I'm excited to vote for Guzma in the 2020 election. <laughs> Yeah, of course, if Guzma needs your votes, go in and vote for yeah. Guzma. Make sure to go support Guzma in the primaries. Once again, your boy is asking you to vote. <laughs> <laughs> your boy is once again asking you to please support his campaign. <laughs> <laughs> And that's it for, for To Be A Master. Until next time, everyone, have a great day. And remember, keep safe search on. <laughs> <laughs>